30 seconds out. Why am I not centered? I'm not centered because I need to do this. Oh, let me make this bigger. Boom. What up, y'all? Can y'all hear me? I mean, are we in the building this week? Last week I had some technical difficulties. It is almost eight o'clock, three, two, one, eight p.m. What's up, y'all? We in the building. Eight o'clock Tuesday, Eastern Standard Time. We do this every Tuesday, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome to the DJ Kenny Parker Show. And I see you guys are already um, having a nice conversation. Big Bat, what up? Gregory Nettis, always in the building, what up? Drake Stack Dollars, regular, what up? It's just getting, getting ready. It's Tuesday, y'all, word. Maddie Cakes Muhammad, all the regulars are here. Big Bat, let's go. Um, I see you guys talking about which borough has the dopest MCs. Green Lion Entertainment, peace. Joker's Oddball, BDP, yes. Um, Joker's Oddball, can't sleep on Brooklyn MCs. No, you can't. Um, this is an interesting topic. Y'all jumping right in. JT, peace family. Got the matchsticks popping my eyes over so I can catch the Tuesday live crew. Thank you for staying up wherever you are. Um, big bat, did Kenny learn his equipment this week? I hope so. I can see this week, and if you guys can hear me, um, we are good to go. Let me scroll down a little bit. Corey Flood, what up? Um, Dan Mar Mar Marasuti, what up from Scarborough, Canada? Love Canada. What up to you guys? Tinket Elijah, um, what's up? Um, Daniel, 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 the Don Freeman, your KP. I have actually been to over 50 KRS shows. Wow. And I have actually met you at the Key Club in Hollywood, California. Big up. We met. That's dope. 50 KRS shows. That's a lot of BDP. <laughs> um, let me scroll down. Corey Flood, Angelo Maldonado. It's about that time. Yes. Bay Kemet, Bay, Bay Kemet, salute from Trenton, New Jersey. The story here is that PRT had y'all surrounded at Ryder College. I don't know that, that, I'm not even gonna comment on that. Surrounded. Well, we got out of there. <laughs> um, Stella Shriner, what up, Jay Moose? Grand scheme in the building, BDP forever. Pat S. What up, Pat S? Um, Benny Doyle. I love Tuesdays. Shout out from Miss Agua, Kenny. <laughs> That's Toronto. Um, Hassan Burton. Peace to my brother. Beats, rhymes, and life. Yes. Uh, let me comment on um, KB Play. Peace, KP. Let me comment on um, the boroughs. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, as we know, Bronx created hip hop. And um, I guess from 79, I'm going to start when, when Rapper's Delight came out. From 79 till I guess about 83, the Bronx dominated rap. And then Queens really started to dominate. Shout out to Run DMC. Shout out to LL Cool J. Um, the big groups back then, Run DMC, LL Cool J. Curtis Blow was from the Bronx. I'm thinking of people who was in like Crush Groove. The Fat Boys, um, I do believe they was repping Brooklyn. I know Cool Rock Ski was from Brooklyn. I do believe the Fat Boys were repping Brooklyn. Um, and Houdini, I'm not sure who they were repping. I know Grandmaster D is from Flatbush. Shout out to him. That's my dude. So the it was still spread out, but Queens was at the top. And then um, 
I would say Brooklyn at the very high end has some real high end MCs. If you look at Biggie, Hove, Kane. And the funny thing is they all from Bed the Bed Star section of Brooklyn, which is you know one small section of Brooklyn. But you look at those three, Brooklyn is real top heavy with those three. But I would say Queens has a lot of dope MCs, man. And I'm a Brooklyn guy, but uh because you gotta look at tribe and the whole that salt and pepper. Herbie Lovebug crew was big and um the juice crew, you know. Long Island had a bunch of dope MCs too. You look at Rakim, Public Enemy, EPMD. I mean, it was pretty spread out, De La Soul, but um I would say Queens is really heavy. I mean, like they said, Brooklyn had underground MCs, Black Moon. Shout out to Black Moon, J. Rue. But um, I think it's an interesting conversation because, and I'm not even mentioning the Bronx because the Bronx had, to me, well, not the least amount of big MCs. I would say Staten Island out of Five Borough. I mean, they had the Wu, UMCs. I think that's about it. Um, off the top of my head, uh, even some of the Wu is from Brooklyn, but um, yeah, I would say the Bronx had KRS, Pun, Fat Joe, I'm going, I'm, I might go Queens, man, <laughs> I might go Queens with the overall, I mean, uh, I mean, all the boroughs are represented, but if you look at the most, I'm going to say this, the most dope MCs in New York probably came from that Queens area, in my opinion. This is off the top of my head. Um, Joker's are the special ed. Special ed's from, Brook, from Brooklyn. Flatbush in the house. He, uh, Charles 13X at Queens had the 90s because of Nas and Coogee rap. Yeah, but Biggie and, and, and Jay and I would still say Queens it's, it's a tough one, y'all. I mean it's a tough one. Uh, I'm going to go with Queens overall. J. Wu 72, where is the Kenny Parker show instrumental? Good question. I don't even have that instrumental. Uh, maybe KRS has that on one of these old dats that he has in his in storage. I've never even heard the Kenny Parker show instrumental. We've never performed that song to the instrumental. We've always did that song to another beat. Eric Wright, RIP Ecstasy, Houdini from Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't remember. I thought I've seen Ecstasy. Shout out to him. I've seen him in Brooklyn, but I didn't know if Houdini was repping Brooklyn. I know Grandmaster D is from Brooklyn. I didn't know. I don't know where Jalil is from. Um, uh, Benny Doyle, what up? Kenny Parker show. Yes, hip hop, hip hop, 1973. I'm an Uptown BX Harlem representative. With that being said, Queens got it. BK a, cl a close second. Yeah, I, I, I would kind of lean like that. DG, how about New Jersey? New Jersey is heavy. New Jersey is heavy. Um, at the very high end, you got Naughty, Red Man, Latifah, and them. You got Lords of the Underground and PRT and Shout out to my peoples, Heather B, Double X Posse, Jersey City, Chill Rob G. Um, Jersey has some people. I wouldn't put them, I wouldn't put Jersey up there with like Queens or Brooklyn or even over Long Island, but Jersey's heavy. Dre Stack Dollars, AZ, was he BK or Queens? That's a good question. 
I thought he was BK. FE2. What up, FE2? Yeah, I'm from Harlem, and I live in the BX. Queens got the most classic dope MCs. Yeah, I would say that. That's my argument. Overall. Richard Van Zent. Richard Van Zenten. Yeah, although I cannot sleep, I'm finally attending live. Love from Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Shout out to the, to the Netherlands. We did a few shows out there. Dope spot to do shows. Europe is a dope place to do shows, man. You guys in Europe really appreciate hip hop. And um, I guess it's because, you know, we here in the U.S., even especially in New York, you get spoiled. I mean, you can see your favorite rapper just walking down the street here in New York. You could you could literally every week bump into somebody who a rapper who's had a record out walking around just places. But when you go to other states or even out of the country, you, they don't get to see artists that much. And um, what I found in BDP shows is that they know even all of the album cuts, like songs you're not even thinking about performing in Europe. They are on top of those songs. <laughs> They know the eighth song on your album. We're here in the States. We're pretty single driven. That's just been my experience. Big bad. Other states considered Brooklyn MCs the standard. I don't know. Did they? Um, I don't know if Brooklyn is the standard. I mean, if you consider Big J and Kane, I mean, that's right at the top of the pile. But I mean, you could say Nas, G Rap, and LL. You know what I mean? Or you could say KRS, Pun, and the whole Furious Five, Curtis Blow, that whole era. I mean, you can, you know, if you want to pick three, you know what I mean? Long Island could say we got the God. Rakim, PE, and EPMD, that's a tough three, man. That's a that's a tough, tough. Long Island got a tough three, man. I mean, Hassan Burton, AZ from Brooklyn, yeah. Joker's audible. Y'all slept on group home BK. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, I mean, there's a lot of dope groups, especially like the underground groups. BK always had <laughs> grimy underground you know like a blase blase and stuff like that we you know bk always got somebody with some tims on and a hoodie spitting um i didn't mention manhattan i didn't mention uptown that much uptown might have the least amount of mcs no disrespect um you got dougie mace i mean who's repping uh, who's repping harlem Dougie Fresh, Mace, Cameron and the Dipset. Uh, off the top of my head, that's that's about it. What's up, Harlem? Corey Flood, Tim Dog is from the Bronx. Yes, Farrell Monch is from Queens, New York. Yeah, Farrell Monch, a dope MC. Um, yeah, Queens is. Joker's audible. Manhattan should really be the truth. I guess things didn't play out different. Yeah. Wonder why that is. Is it is it because Uptown was too busy getting money to, to, to spit? Is it because I was saying, is there something about hardship and struggle that brings out the dopest MCs? Because that's how rap really started in the Bronx out of hardship. It, the, the 70s, late 70s Bronx was in ruins, looked like a war zone. And in that era, hip hop was born. And you know, Brooklyn's always been grimy. But then I mean, Queens is overall a really nice place. I mean, it's Queens Bridge. So just, uh, the argument is, the, is it the grimier the place, the dope of the MCs? <laughs> but Long Island is not really grimy like that. And they have great MCs, so I don't know. Um, Big Bat, Big L. Big L's rep in Manhattan. Word, I forgot about Big L. Shut up. Rest in peace to the Big L. He's repping Uptown. Um, 
El, 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 El Tico Loco. I can't really see it. Mob Style. Shout out to Mob Style. Wow. Shout out to my man, Gangsta Lou. Um, Mob Style. <laughs> well, they even really was. I mean, they were rappers, but AZ was. AZ was. Uh, he turned to the rap life after his his drug life, I believe. Um, the original AZ, not AZ um, down with Nas, but the original AZ, Rich Porter, Alpo AZ. Uh, shout out Mob Style. Um, yeah, they were rapping Harlem, but still Harlem hasn't. Hasn't had that many MCs. Norman Osborne, Slick Rick. Slick Rick really represents the Bronx. I think. Oh, the Bronx is a little heavy. Hold on. Kumo D skill gets Kumo D. He reps uptown. He reps Harlem. I mean, he reps Manhattan, right? I mean, Manhattan has a few. Manhattan has a few because shot Mo D, the treacherous three. Manhattan has a few, but I would say, considering they should have been more, considering their proximity to the Bronx from the early days, and they had all the clubs, Harlem should have been more. There's no way Queens should have had more MCs that we know of that were big than Harlem. I don't think so. My opinion. Harlem should have been bigger. Um, JT, nah, we claim with Slick Rick for the UK. <laughs> Word, you know what? Word, my bad. Slick Rick was here to BX. You know what? We claim with Slick Rick for the UK. UK stand strong on Slick Rick. <laughs> Word, JT. Word, UK is like, nah, we ain't letting y'all get Slick Rick. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Betty Doyle, what up? Two hours, Kenny. Ah, I don't know about two hours. I might lose everybody in two hours. MM Crossfire, is New York still the mecca of hip-hop today? I don't think there's a mecca. And what do we mean by mecca? We, do we mean like the center of the, of the game, like the center of the rap universe like it once was? Um, I would say... Well, who's at the top of the rap game at the moment? Drake. I mean, most of these guys are not even from New York. These, I would say New York is not. New York will always be the mecca of hip hop historically. But um, right now, I would have to say no. The sound of New York is not the sound that's playing on the radio. Number one, thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. Really appreciate it. Um, salute, KP. LI has more greats. PE, Doom, Rakim, and PND. Yeah, we shouted Long Island. Long Island is really strong. Long Island is strong. The Guard, PMD, Doom, PE, De La Soul, Craig Mack. Long Island is strong. Surprisingly strong considering it's a suburb. Um, Joke is audible. New York City, every borough is the God city, no matter how big anywhere else gets. So the real hip hop got to resurface. I mean, hip hop is so global now and so big that it's hard to say one place. It's like you could be from anywhere. I mean, there was a time where if you weren't from New York, you almost couldn't make it. You almost, even if you were from New Jersey, New York wasn't trying to hear New Jersey rappers. And Jersey, for those that don't know, Jersey is right across the water from New York. Matter of fact, if you stand in lower Manhattan, you can look and see New Jersey across the right across the water. You can literally see New Jersey standing in Manhattan. And, and, and New York was like, nah, if you ain't from New York, we're not checking for you. Um, so I don't know. 
Pat asks, hip hop nowadays is trash. Um, that's, I mean, trash is a relative. I mean, it's all relative. It's maybe trash to our generation, but to the new kids, it's everything. I mean, it's not for me. I can say that. Tassan Burton, Meg Thee Stallion, I guess. Who, is, who, who Meg Thee Stallion rep? A lot of these artists out right now, I don't even know who they rep. Big Bad, New York Radio sounds like a down south jukebox. Absolutely. Um, the New York City radio stations destroyed the New York City sound. New York Radio destroyed New York rap. I mean, I, I can get into a whole thing on my theories on that, but I'm just going to put that out there. New York radio destroyed New York City rap. Damon Clark, yo, Kenny, I'm late, but I'm back in effect. Better late than never. We do this every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for everybody on the check-in right now. And a shout out to everybody who's going to be watching this later on on the Rewind. I love you guys. Um, Benny Doyle, I hate that I got to get back to work. Great topic tonight. Shout out to MMA and JT. Yes, shout them out. Respect. Um, El Tico Loco, upstate New York is making noise right now. I guess. Yeah. Um, Ed Olivier, hey, what's good? Respect to you. Thank you so much for your contributions to the channel. Kenny P, what's up? Who's your top battle MCs? What do you mean? What do you mean by in like the battle world, like that, that uh what you call it when they have like competitions? I forgot what it was called when they used to have the battles back and forth, like organized. Do you mean by that? I I, I didn't really watch that stuff that much. Or do you mean battles like on records? I didn't really watch that stuff that much. I mean, there's been some great battles over the years on records. Some great ones. I don't really have a top. You'd have to you'd have to get back and what you, and describe and explain what do you mean by that. Angelo Angelo Maldonado. Hip hop ain't about repping anymore. They're about dropping twenty five albums a week. Exactly because the songs come and go so fast. Excuse me. Song come out. It could be number top ten come out top 10 in a week, two weeks later, it's number 40. A week or two later, it's gone. Records don't even last a month anymore. We used to take singles and albums used to stretch a whole year and you release three singles, a, a big album would have three singles that would take a whole year to explore that album. Now, whole albums and stuff, they don't last a month. So you gotta keep dropping or, or you'll be forgotten. The way the game is right now is is quantity over quality. Norman Osborne, every style and cadence of hip hop, New York artists done it first. Facts. El Tico, oh, you mean league rap battles? Yeah. I didn't really watch that stuff that much. Um, Spook Realm 4Q, let's try this again. DJ KP, who was more gangster and intimidating between Bumpy Knuckles and Just Ice? Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. See, you got to understand how I met them was in a friendly situation as friends of my brother. So I didn't meet them in an intimidating way. Like Just Ice is, was huge even back in the day when everybody was skinny in the Latin quarters, just ice looked like the Incredible Hulk. Um, but he's mad cool, crack jokes, laugh. You know, he has a very storied reputation. But um, I met him differently. So I don't see just ice the way people see him. I see him as a good friend and a cool dude. Uh, Bumpy Knuckles. I once saw Bumpy. I was meeting Bumpy somewhere. It was in front of a, a concert. 
I think it was an LL Cool J concert. I wasn't meeting him, but I was in front of a con front of a place called Manhattan Center in New York City, and LL Cool J was performing. This had to be when that song I Will Do I Will Love You Better was out. So it was like two, 2001, 2002. I was standing in front of the Manhattan Center about to go in, and I saw bumpy knuckles coming down the street, and people were parting like the Red Sea. They didn't even know who he was, but he just looked so scary to people. And everybody was moving out the way. When he got up to me, I just started laughing. I was like, yo, Bumpy, man, why you look so, like, scary? And he just started laughing because he was just like, I don't know. I'm just walking down the street. So from what I've seen, I would say Bumpy seems more intimidating to people that don't know. If you didn't know any of them, you saw them walking. I think Bumpy has a little bit more meaner face coming down the street. This is just my opinion on the top of my head. Shout out to Bumpy. That's my dude. Uh, I'm going to go with Bumpy only because I've never seen Just Ice mad. I've only seen Just Ice around us just chilling. So if I seen Just Ice mad, maybe I'd have a different opinion. I've never really seen Bumpy. I've seen Bumpy annoyed, and I've seen him in, like, mode. So I'm going to go with Bumpy. That's a great question. Um, MM, MMA Crossfire. Today's songs are kind of disposable like pudding. They are. They are. I don't know if it's built. I mean, the way the game is and the way the internet is, it's just you're just getting bombarded with information, and it's so easy to make a song that you're just getting, the market is flooded. Back in the day, it was very difficult to make a, a record. You had to go in the studio. You had to have a budget, producers, engineers, and you had to have somebody to put it out. It was a whole production. So a lot of the, a lot of the riffraff got filtered out. By the time you got to the level of your song getting put out, you had, you had been filtered. Um, but now it's just a bombardment. As a DJ, you can't even keep up with all the records that's coming out. Jeffrey Rowe, thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. Really appreciate it. Um, can we talk about Arturo Alfonso Schomburg, Sch his contributions to that Harlem Renaissance and how that set the stage for the origins of hip-hop and BX? I don't know much about Schomburg, except I, knew, I do know there's the Schomburg Center which I was at a couple of times. I think we performed there, if I recall. But I don't know the history of Arturo Alfonso Sch Schomburg. Um, maybe if you guys can look it up, uh, if you're interested. I don't know. He said, set the stage for the origins of hip hop in the BX? Really? Set the stage? I'm not sure about that. Uh, great question, Jeffrey Rowe. I'm sorry, I can't even answer that because I don't know. I just know, I just know that there's a Schomburg Center in... I do believe Harlem, and um, we have performed their BDP. Damn. I want this thing to move. All right. Um, this thing gets stuck here. Hold on, y'all. I'm having some difficulty trying to move this um i don't know why it's doing that hold on y'all so i'm trying to get back to the questions but it won't let me get back oh i think i did something wrong but okay sorry i think i deleted i think i deleted the question Sorry, my brother. I, I did something by accident, but I'm back. Uh, Pat S, I miss when hip hop wasn't so digital. Me too. Uh, let me scroll down. Soul Viz, okay, P, that new NPC has the stem separation function. You should try it out. Yeah, I heard people talking about it. I haven't even messed with the stems yet. That is crazy to technology. But is it going to make records better? We have all of this technology, but the records aren't better, man. MM 
Aaron Stamper, Bumpy Knuckles and KRS Rough Rough on the Sex and Violence album was a tough record. Yes, it was. Shout out to D Square on the production. I was not in the studio for that. Uh, Blasnes Gotcha. What's up, Kenny? Did you guys ever perform same venue with the KMD or ever got to meet, chill with them or later MF Doom? I don't ever believe I met MF Doom, but I met KMD, the group, before. We did so many shows with people. I'm pretty sure we did a show with KMD. I don't remember, but I do remember meeting those guys when Peach Fuzz was out. Um, I do remember that. And it's way before Doom, so um, yeah. But no, so to answer your question, I don't. We never chilled. I never chilled with them, but I did meet KMD. Um, Mr. Red Buster Rhymes, BK or LI? That's a good question because he always talks about how he grew up in Flatbush. He didn't live that far from where we used to live. Then he moved to Long Island. And like leaders really reps Long Island. So that's a good question. I have to ask Buster that. Buster, Buster, do you rep BK or Long Island, man? <laughs> we inquiring minds would like to know. Jewel, Jewel, Jewel TV, Arturo Schromberg died in 1938. Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. MK Ultra technology with no heart. Yeah, but plus it's, n it's nothing. There's no, like I said, there's no filter. In order for you to make a record back in the day, I hate sound like the back in the day, the day guy, but you had to go through, like in order to get a record deal or get signed, you had to make a demo or perform in the club dozens of times or make a demo and shop it all over the place and put your demo in the midst of a bunch of demos. Record companies used to get boxes of demos, boxes of demos delivered. And once in a while, a demo would come out of that midst of boxes and make it up to a level. So there was like a filtering process. By the time you got to the level where a record company was even trying to hear you, you was way more polished than artists are today. And I think we missed that filtering process. We need to filter out a lot of the noise to get to the cream of the crop. That's why we got a lot of, I mean, there was whack records back in the day too, of course, but um, nowhere near the amount of copycat music and just music that sounds unprofessional that comes out now. It would, that, all of that would have got filtered out. Um, it was, In the eighties, it was so hard to get a record deal, my goodness. A dude like Karis One had to battle his way into the game with all of that talent. I mean, you look at everybody's story. You look at every artist, the big artist from the 80s, and look at their story. Biz damn near had to sleep in front of Marley Mall's on the ground in Queensbridge Projects. Damn near to get Marley Mall and give him one shot. And then when Marley heard Biz, he was like, all right, come on in the studio and let's make a song. And then Biz brought in Kane. Kane, I think Kane and Biz was battling in Brooklyn and Albany Square Mall or something like that, how the story goes. But I'm just saying, in order to get in the game was so difficult in the 80s. Even the 90s, even the 80s was ridiculous. Now you can make, you can literally make a song on a phone and have it up that same night. Robbie the Danger, thank you so much once again for your contribution to the channel each week. You are a true gem. Um, question, if you can't set the arms of the SL1200s, you're not a real DJ. Facts. <laughs> I don't want to diss anybody starting out. I would say um, get on the Technique 1200s, learn how to use them. Uh, I've used everything. I have nothing against any equipment. I've used controllers. I use controllers now sometimes. I, I've used turntables, obviously. 
I've used Dax, I've used Serato, I've used CDJs, I've used every medium that there is to play music, real to real, everything. So, you know, it is what it is, but I mean, if you have the option to learn to DJ on a 1200, get on them, man. Um, you know, once you master that, you can, you can, you can go anywhere. Great comment. Let me scroll down a little bit. Um, positive, uh, Hassan Burton, Positive K from the BX. Shout out to my man, Paz K. That's my dude. Shout out to Paz. Um, Hip Hop st 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 Hip Hop 1973. Sadat X is from the BX. Yes, he is. But um, I do believe brand Nubians rep New Rochelle. They rep Nauru, right? Um, New Rochelle had some MCs up there. That whole area. Well, we, New Rochelle had Pooba and them. Pete Rock, and I do believe Heavy D, right? And then look at Yonkers. Yonkers had the Locks, um, DMX, and I'm going to throw Mary J in there, even though she's an R&B singer. She's about as hip-hop as it gets. Uh, I'm going to throw her in there, too. Um, and these are just the these are the outer boroughs. These, not, not outer boroughs. He's not even part of five boroughs. This is out of New York. Out of out of yeah, outer boroughs. What do they call it? The outer boroughs. Not part of the five boroughs. It's on the outskirts. Um, and we, they might be over Harlem. <laughs> oh shoot! Maybe not over, but competing with. Come on, Harlem. What we all doing? Getting money. That's what y'all were doing. Brian Shaw, top five hip hop groups. Wow. It's a tough one. Well, first, like I always say, let's take Run DMC and put them out of the equation. I don't think Run DMC could even be ranked in any ranking. Run DMC is so important to the culture that they can't even be in a ranking, in my opinion. So we're going to take Run DMC out. And let's ask, what exactly is a group? Is it two MCs or is that a duo? Because is it, De La Soul is a group, two MCs and a DJ. Trial Core Quest is a group, two MCs and a DJ. Or is Nice and Smooth a group? Or is that a duo? Is EPMD a group? That's a question. Or, or is a group like Wu-Tang or NWA, Onyx, three or more? And then the question is, is Gangstar a group? One MC, one DJ. And why is Gangstar a group and Pete Rock and CL Smooth not a group? Is Boogie Down Productions a group? Um, although there's been dozens of people who, have, who can say they was in BDP at one point, 99.9% .9 of all the lyrics are KRS-One. Was he really a soloist the whole time? Like These are questions, you know, when you say top five groups, what is a group? But I'm going to say... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to see what you guys say. Is a duo different than a group? Before I answer the question. Um, Hassan Bird, BDP is a movement. Death Rock, a group is two or more individuals. What do you mean by two or more? DJ and rapper? Because then Pete Rock and CL Smooth? Is that an Eric B and Rakim? Is that a group? Or is it two MCs? MMA Crossfire. PE is a group. Chuck did probably 90% of the rhymes, but Flavor was on every song. And then there's Terminator X and, and SOWs. I don't know if they were in the group, but I mean, officially. But um, PE is a group. 
Yeah. Um, I missed. Let me scroll down a little bit. FE2, Gangstar is not a group. So Gangstar to you is not a group. So that means Eric B and Rakim is not a group. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince is not a group. Um, let me scroll down. I'm going to see some of these answers. Crush the, the soul. Nice and Smooth had Teddy Ted as their DJ. Absolutely, they did. Shout out to Nice and Smooth, Greg Nice and Smooth B. I hope to have Greg Nice on this channel. We had spoke about me talking about a specific topic. He has a great BDP story. And um, Teddy Ted and, and Special K are awesome, too. That's practically family. That's family. So shout, shout out to them. Joker's Arbor. Is EPMD beneath Run DMC or the shining star, the influence that took the throne? with only real hip hop, nothing. Like I said, Run DMC it, to me is not even in, in, in the conversation. It's just your average Canadian. Gangstar is a duo. See, that's the thing. Right, let's, get, let's, let's get this out. Is a duo different than a group? Def Rock, a group is two or more individuals. Let me scroll down a little bit. PE is a group. VHS Hip Hop, if they have additional significant members, then yes, it's a group. PE had a lot of roles in the group. I like that definition. If they have significant members, then yes, it's a group. But then... Gangstar? What is Gangstar? Gregory Nettis, Houdini is an underrated legend rap group that should get more respect. Absolutely. And Chris shouted out and I shouted him out, out of here. When will I be large like Houdini? Yeah. Benny Doyle, I'm back. Fuck a job. This is Kenny Parker Hour. Boogie Down Production. Boogie Down feels like a group. <laughs> yes. Don't get fired, but yes. Well, thank you for coming back. Boogie Down feels like a group. KRS Scott LaRock D Nice, the original three. Was that a group? D Nice was multifaceted in the group, but he didn't rap. D Nice might not have rhymed on any BDP album. Maybe, maybe some shout outs here and there. I saw somebody, ah, oh, this thing just jumped down. Ah, oh, yeah. Wax, Wax Curator, Smith & Wesson always considered a group with the beat miners on production. Smith & Wesson is a group that's two MCs. P100, two MCs or more is a group. Two MCs, so there's no such thing as a duo, really. Master Cypher Rep, a duo is a two-member group. <laughs> so that's, that's a group. <laughs> that's a funny answer. A duo is a two-member group. Hold on, y'all. Robbie the Danger, thank you so much. Oh, I already saw this one. Uh, Terrell McMiller, yes. Thank you so much for your contribution to, your, to the channel. Um, KP, what's good, bro? Names that really get respect they deserve. King Sun, that's my dude. Shout out to King Sun. Just, just, oh, King Just, yes. Um, Real Live, Real Live was 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 rolling with BDP for a second. JVC Force, shout out to them. Strong Island, UTFO, RIP, Kango Kid, the Educated Rapper, Pebbly Poo, Shy Rock. Shout out to Shy Rock, the mother of all females MCs. Yeah, um, absolutely. All right, let's get back. I want to. I want to get some more of these. Michael Ray, two is a group. Das Effects, Camp Low, UMCs, etc. Hassan Burton, Guru, and Premier. So two is a group. You mean two MCs? So we're going with two MCs, not DJ and rapper. That's a, a duo. Yes.
Circle Circle for Life. Nope, Gangstar is more than Preem and Guru. Well, there's the Gangstar Foundation, but Gangstar is Preem and Guru, as, as I understand it. Jewel TV, Gangstar is a duo. Yeah, I'm starting to lean to more towards a duo is DJ Rapper. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Eric B and Rakim, those are duos. And I'm going to say Gangstar is not a group. Gangstar is a duo. I'm going to go with that. A group is two MCs or more. Robbie the Danger. Then what is MOP? A duo? See, yeah, that, that's the problem. But we're going to say MOP is a group. MOP is a group. Two MCs. We're going with two MCs or more is a group. Bouncer. Thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. Um, love BDP and love you. Underrated groups are Detroit's Most Wanted and Live Squad. RIP Big Stretch from Queens. RIP E Money Bags as well. I knew Big Stretch from Queens. Um, I used to see him all the time. He used to be with Tupac too. I remember that. Um, shout out, rest in peace to Big Stretch. He was cool. Um, yeah, I didn't know about E Money Bags. I mean, I know, I know of the story just from like, you know, street stuff, but rest in peace to him as well. Um, let me see if I can scroll down. Every time I look at, every time I look at a specific question, it doesn't let me scroll down anymore. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that at some point. Cause I don't wanna delete the questions. Damn. I might have to delete the questions just so I can move on. I don't really wanna do that, but, ah, here we go. Joker's Abba, Gangstar is a couple of musical geniuses, guru repping Boston for real. Yes, they are. Blaze Nez gotcha. So main source isn't a group. <laughs> See, here we go. Two DJs and an MC. Main source is a trio. <laughs> Shout out to my man Extra P. Main source is a trio. That's a tough one, Blaze Nez. Blaze Nez. Uh, main source is a trio. By our definition, we're going, we're going, main source is a trio. JT, Gangstar is definitely a group. Primo says it nearly every week on his YouTube. Bigging up headquarters in Big Shug Borough, who were founding members. Shug was a Gangstar before Primo. So if you're going to count Shug as being another MC, then Gangstar had two MCs, Suge and Guru, and then they're now a group. But by our definition, we're going with, um, by our definition, we're going with um, one DJ and one MC is a duo. Hold on, I saw some good comments and I lost them. Oh, I'm just gonna pick up from here. I love. Oh, somebody said MOP is a group. P100, MOP is a group. Uh, Lethal Five Flow. Kenny, I thought you were gonna school us today on how shady the music business is. Yes, I did I, a, a few lives back. I really got into it. I'm gonna get into it some more, but I wanted to get into these, this, this, this subject right here that somebody brought up, which I find pretty interesting. I want to talk about the music business as well, but I I really want to get into this. Um, Dan Maserati, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince had like four members. Well, if you're going to count beatbox uh, 
ready, what is it, Ready Rock C? He used to do the beatbox underwater, which was ridiculous. If you're going to count him, I don't really count him in Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. I count him as like a, an additional. Because, you know, Charlie Mack first out the limo. Was he in the group or was he Charlie Mack first out the limo? Mob Deep a group. Two or more, and we, we, we got to narrow this down. Two or more MCs. Because Dave McClark goes, no, a group is more than two MCs. Duo equal two MCs. <laughs> we can't really agree on this. Are we, I, I'm going with, you got to go with two MCs or more is a group. One MC and one DJ is a duo. Basically, from what I'm seeing here, from, from what the comments that I'm seeing here, Michael Ray the second, Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock is a duo. Pete Rock and CL Smooth is a duo. Canera says Gangstar is a group. Group, official definition is two or more. If they are officially together, they are a group. See, so now it, it, once again, it becomes tough to really define you. It's hard to define a group. So that's why I said when you ask me, what's my favorite group? It's hard to say because I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really have a definition. Gregory Nettis, Lost Boys, Mrs. Cheeks did all the rap. Freaky Ty sung once, but he was a hype man. And Lost Boys is a group. Yeah, because Freaky Ty was a, a vocalist on most of those records, and he was very important. His little ad libs, not little, not, I mean, his ad libs were very important in those songs. And they had a DJ Spig Nice. I do believe he just came home a little while ago. Um, yeah. So the Lost Boys are a group. Um, I'm going to answer the question in a second, y'all. I'm just trying to get, I like, I like seeing you, you guys' uh, uh, definitions. Charles 13X, nah, two MCs is a duo because some duos didn't have a DJ, especially when sampling became popular. So see, we, guys have different opinions because Charles 13X is saying two MCs is a duo. I'm going to go with two MCs is a group. EPMD, they had Scratch, but EPMD is a group. Naughty is a group. Tribe is a group. Daylight is a group. I'm going to go with that. And I saw somebody say, uh, main source is a curveball. It was a curveball. Yeah, that main source question was, <laughs> that main source question was a tough one. Um, VHS Hip Hop, Kid and Play is two MCs, but got to be a duo. Oh, man. You know why Kid and Play sounds like a duo? Because they say their names separately. Kid and Play. They're not like a group, gang star, and then featuring Kid and then the guys that Kid and Play, but they call themselves Gangstar. They call themselves Kid and Play, like nice and smooth. But by this definition, I'm gonna, the definition I'm gonna go with, I gotta call Kid and Play a group. Even though they seem like a duo, I gotta call them a group. Why well, be the danger? But if a group doesn't have a DJ, it should be considered a duo because they lack that element. Does having a DJ mean, is that the prerequisite, prerequisite to being a group? It's a good question. JT. Just your average Canadian. Premier specifically said that he considers Big Sugar a member, so that's good enough for me. And he, me too. And yes, Extended Family is Gangstar Foundation. 
Rolling Crush MD, duos, trios, etc., are types of groups in regards to number of MCs. Hip hop is a good one. Hip hop 1973. KP Rakim calls himself the rap soloist. Yes, he does. And it's two of them. So who's Eric B then? I'm going to go with. Um, this is the definition I'm going with. I'm answering the question. Two or more rappers in your group or two or more vocalists in your group like a flavor flavor freaky top two or more vocalists in your group and you are a group two or more vocalists in your organization you are a group one mc and a dj is a duo and with that being said my top 5 is tough maybe in no particular order you guys know that i'm a huge native tongue fan obviously so daylight and tribe are absolutely in there but i'm gonna put i'm gonna put native tongue as one thing i'm gonna put daylight i might be cheating i'm gonna put daylight tribe jungle the whole i'm gonna put native tongue as one thing so i'm gonna have native tongue pe NWA, Wu Tang, EPMD, and this is tough because I can name some others that I love. Um. Like I love Naughty, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna have them in the five. I love Naughty, but yeah, that's my five. PE, Wu Tang, NWA, Native Tongue, and EPMD. That's my five favorite groups. Now, of course, there's other great groups. I know people won't try to kill me on here, but um, there's other great groups. Um, was Heavy D and the boys considered a group? Triggs 9802. See, this is what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> Triggs, man. Heavy D and the boys was one vocalist who did all the rap, DJ, producer, ADF, and then two dancers who never rhymed. Are dancers even considered? Well, they were on an album cover. They were in the group, the boys. Damn, bro. I said two vocalists, right? <laughs> it's tough. This is tough. Heavy D and the boys, they're calling it and the boys. So I'm going to say they're a group, but by definition, not real. Heavy D is really a soloist, but. Like I said, Boogie Down Productions, to me, KRS-One was really a solo rapper the whole time, in my opinion. But Boogie Down Productions was absolutely a group because there was people with specific roles. Scott LaRock, D-Nice, has specific roles. I mean, even later on members, but but... That's a that's tricks try to throw tricks tricks try to throw a curveball too, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna slip out of that one. <laughs> Charles thirteen X two MCs and a DJ is a group. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Um, Brian Shaw, Mantronics was so underrated. Yes, he was. There's a, quite a few underrated producers, man. It just were big before the super producer name, before the super producer title got put on people. Before that super producer title got put on people, and I do believe Pete Rock was that super producer, even though Marley really was. But Marley's name was, you didn't even really know Marley was doing beats like that, like that. 
Dre was a super producer, but it wasn't really labeled like that until Pete, once Pete Rock, Pete Rock was a dude that had, had that super producer tag, in my opinion. And then from then on, I think producers got a lot more shine. Michael Ray the second, man, they all groups. <laughs> Hip Hop 1973, Big Daddy Kane always had a DJ, Mr. C, but Kane is a soloist. Absolutely. Absolutely. E-E-S-T, E-S-T, 1974, what about Three Times Dope from Philly? We I've mentioned on this channel quite a few times that I'm, I loved E-S-T as an MC. E-S, the Overlord of Fresh. I loved him as an MC, and I don't think he get mentioned enough when they talk about Philly MCs. Um, absolutely, I'm down with three times dope. Wax curator, what about the roots when Malik B left? Malik B left, um, and that's another question. What if somebody leaves the group and leave you solo? Then what? If you keep the name going. Like you look at Boogie Down Productions. Scott was tragically killed. KRS kept Boogie Down Productions. D Nice left and went solo. KRS still kept Boogie Down Productions. MMA Crossfire. Diggable Planets is a group to me. Yeah, me too. Robbie the Danger. Thank you so much once again. I appreciate you always, dog. Dancers or hype men counts towards the group because they perform with the MCs. Only if they're on the, on the record. They might have to be on the cover. <laughs> you might have to be, if you're a dancer, you might have to be on the cover. Like Heavy D and the Boys. Because you can't be like, because Scoob and Scrap are not part of Big Daddy Kane, though. To me, Kane is a soloist. They're not a group. Soloist Big Daddy Kane with Mr. C as his DJ and Scoob and Scrap as his dancers because he talked about them on records. They're on the back of, excuse me, the album, I believe, but Hype Man is a little different because you are a vocalist. Flavor Flav was absolutely Flavor Flav was as important, almost as important as Chuck was in that group. Um, so, yeah. See, now Charles 13X is throwing a curve. He says one MCs and one DJ is a group. See, we're never going to, we're never going to agree. I'm going with one MC and one DJ as a duo. Our business too. Thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. Really appreciate it. Peace, KP. I'll be with KRS in DC on Thursday. Are you coming? I'm not sure. Maybe. Um, that's dope, though. If you be with KRS, that's dope. Maybe we can meet. Now let me scroll down again. Let's see. Here we go. Um, Rod Justice Hip Hop, last one to the party. Thank you so much uh, for sure checking in. I just saw a funny comment. Uh, last call, MC Ricky D and Slick Rick. <laughs> it's a group. <laughs> <laughs> MC Ricky D and Slick Rick is a group. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Master Cypher Red. Questions like these are what makes the time fly by so fast. Yeah. It's hard to really. 
it's hard to really um yeah these questions because it's it's, it's it's deep it's like you know trying to get a proper definition joker's eyeball hype man my ass nah some hype man was dope like freaky ty you needed freaky ty man freaky ty was dope with the lost boys man i don't even want to count flavor freaky ty was real dope with the lost boys um We even look at Arrested Development. You all remember um, the girl who used to ad lib? When he used to go, oh, what's the song? I am everyday people. And that girl used to go, he said, I was my own. And she go, my own. And he go, trouble zone, trouble zone. Like that girl that's in um, everyday people, you need that in the record. That was dope. That Those little ad libs that she did, all that was dope. Rock Capo says, Dougie Fresh had two DJs. Is he a group? No, we said two vocalists. Dougie Fresh is, well, the Get Fresh crew. See, here we go. Here we, here we go, man. Here we go, Rock Capo. Because the Get Fresh crew was Slick Rick, Dougie Fresh, Chill Will, Barry B. But then Slick Rick left, but Dougie kept the Get Fresh crew. But he was calling himself Dougie Fresh. He wasn't calling himself, well, did they, before they was Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick. I don't know, bro. I'm going to say Dougie Fresh kept the, slick, the, 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 the Get Fresh crew going even after D Slick Rick left. But Dougie is a soloist. Benny Dawes, Outcast, a duo or group. And Outcast should be, I, I didn't mention Outcast. They, they're way up on my list, too, by the way. Outcast is a group. Two MCs, Outcast is a group. Robbie the Danger, thank you so much. <laughs> My head is about to explode. Red cup top. <laughs> yeah, right too. I know it's a lot. I know, I know you asked a simple question. My favorite uh groups, but I like to get a little deeper with it because you know that's what we're doing here. Uh we're getting a little deeper in the hip hop and you know, what exactly is a group? Um, you know, it's really, it's a really, it's more defined than other genres of music, but rap has its own rules. Um, CD Mac, Naughty by Nature, of course. Bone Thugs and Harmony are not even rappers. Return of the Brother. No, nah, I think Bone Thugs are rappers. That's their style. They have like a singing rap style. I, I consider Bone Thugs and Harmony rappers and a group, my opinion. Razmel, P.E. had Chuck D. Flav and Griff as vocalists. They're definitely a group. I absolutely agree with that. Blaze, need to hear KP, KP say that hip hop bands, oh, I lost a comment, that hip hop bands exist. Maybe he did do, throw tuned in late. Um, hip hop bands do exist. You hearing me say it right now, Blaze. Shout out to Stetsasonic, the hip hop band. Um, of course, the Roots. Of course, the Fugees. Yeah, hip hop bands. Are a group the well the Fuji's have vocalists. All of them had vocalists. I mean, even the Roots once they became just Black Thought. Um, but like you said, Malik B was in the group from the beginning, so it's like one of those things where there was more than one vocalist, and then one guy left, but they kept the group going. The Roots are a group. Dol Dolanite, <laughs> Digital Underground. <laughs> Digital Underground is multiple vocalists. It's Shock G and Humpty Hump. That is a group. Digital Underground is a group. Yeah, I'm going with that. I got to go with that. Robbie the Danger, thank you once again. 
so a group, everyone had to be on stage and on the record to qualify. You had to be on a record. That's a good question. I think if you're not on a record, you definitely can't be part of the group. You had to be on the record. You had to have vocals. And we're talking about the lyricists. You had to have, I'm gonna say two or more lyricists. I need you to have vocals on the record, not just shout outs. You had to, you had to have some kind of vocals on a song. Now, I don't know about be on stage. I guess everyone had to be on stage. Yeah, well, I imagine if you, most of the people who travel, everybody was on stage. Yeah. And you know what's funny? You look at groups. It's like you look at Tribe, right? That first album, People's Extinctive Travels, Q-Tip really carried the whole album. I do believe Fife rhymed on um, Can I Kick It? Now is it. How many songs is on the album? 14, 15? Q-Tip was the whole album. But as we know, the, the, real, the real flavor and the magic of Tribe became when Q-Tip and Fife really got the chemistry going. That's when Tribe, to me, went to the next level. But that first album was great. And Q-Tip carried the whole first album. Same with Naughty by Nature. That first album with OPP on it, Tretch rhymed the whole album, right? Did Vinny even rhyme on the album? I mean, he, maybe he did, but Tretch was like 90 plus percent of that album. But then afterwards, Vinny, they started incorporating Vinny more into the rhymes. But that's tricky too, because like I said with KRS, you could be in a group and do 90 something percent of the rhymes. Rock Capo, LL Scratch, duo or group. Shout out to um Al Scratch. I just saw him the other day. Um they are a group. Ill Al Scratch is a group. Duo, we're moving away. Duo is one MC, one DJ. We're moving. Um, we're moving, we're moving past that. We, we, we have to, we have to settle on a definition. Born gifted. A group is three or more people. Here we go. Born gifted. What do you mean by three or more? Three or more doing what? Doing what? Joey Joe, Native Tongues is a collective, not a group. I know, I was trying to cheat because I really love Tribe and Daylight. So I'm, I'm, I was cheating trying to put Native Tongue as a whole as a, as a whole thing. But if you want me to break it down, I mean, yeah, I love Tribe and Daylight immensely. Um, so that I, I would have really a top six I didn't want to have a top six. I wanted to have a top five. That's why I tried to pile Native Tongue together. But technically, Joey Joe, you are correct. FE2, Bone Thugs are Rappers. Absolutely. Drew, Drew TV, Tretch wrote all of Vinny's rhymes. I saw Tretch say that um, years later when they weren't getting along. Um, um, yeah. Tretch could have easily said all the rhymes in all of the naughty songs. But I think Vinny gave it a little extra flavor. You know, you're chilling with it, titty feeling them. Like that little extra flavor, I, I like that in the songs. I think letting Vinny rhyme was a good decision. Last call, group can be two, yo. Come on, last call. We, we decided, we decided that a group with two MCs. Corey Flood, Kenny, consider Ralph Tresman sings 90% of New Edition, but they are a group. They are because, but nah, because um, Michael Bivens and uh, Ronnie did a lot of rapping in all the records. And hold on, my boy, who, uh, 
What's the shortest dark skinned one? Ricky. Ricky sung a lot on in New Edition. Now, I don't think Ralph sung 90%. I think Ralph sung a lot, but Bobby sung a little. His background. See, RB is just a little bit different. But 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 um they are definitely a group. Even Belle Biv DeVoe is a group. Ricky did the singing, and Ralph and Ronnie did the rapping. Or, you know, if, if y'all call it that. Charles 13X, you need to have Eric Sermon on this discussion. That would be unbelievable, yes. To ask him, is EPMD a group? Is DOS Effects a group? Yes, I'm going with yes. Joker's Audible, man, how you really love Tribe and Daylight. Yes, I do. I love Native Tongue. I love that whole movement. I think it really, the Native Tongue movement for me captured my personality because they were a little bit of a few things like they were conscious, but they also made party records. They also liked girls and liked to have fun. They also made funny stuff like they captured a, a, a whole essence, which is kind of me. Like what, what they represented is my personality more than say, even in my own group, KRS is more conscious and battle, which is not necessarily my personality. Like his personality is he's a conscious rapper and he's a battle rapper and he juggles the two. And he's very aggressive on the mic, but I'm more laid back. I'm more like native tongue. I'm I'm kind of that sometimes. That's why I say I like native tongue. That's like my favorite collective because it's kind of more my personality. I just saw somebody said NWA was a gang. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it just went pat and see. I'm just gonna. I'm, we had an hour and seventeen, y'all. We've been going for a minute. I'm gonna keep going a little while longer. I'll be trying to keep it to an hour. People be saying I should go a little longer. I'm just gonna go a little longer. Um, JT at Corey for no way you just brought Candy Girl New Edition to the live. <laughs> I'm dead. This live has officially hit goat status. <laughs> I yo, I like I like New Edition. By the way. Candy Girl was fire. Um, I never met, I met Michael Bivens once. I met Michael Bivens at the Def Jam Christmas party, 19, what year was that? 1989 or 90? 1990 Def Jam Christmas party. Michael Bivens was there. I do believe it was that one. Yes. No, that, no, it was 1989. You know how? I, because at that time, I was at Chris's house. I was staying at his house, my brother KRS. I was staying at his house for a few days, and he was gone. He had he was out of town. And I remember the mail came, and in the mail was an invitation to the Def Jam Christmas party. And I remember that I was like, well, Chris is not even here. He's not going to be here for this party. I think I'll take this invitation and go to the Def Jam Christmas party. And that's the first one I went to. And I remember that Michael Bivens was there. And I remember that Michael Jordan and Charles Oakley came in and did a walkthrough. They just, went up, they just walked around the club. And everybody was like, this is 89 Michael Jordan. Everybody was like, oh, like it's Mike. And the Def Jam Christmas party had all the stars there. And um, I just remember Michael Jordan, and Charles Oakley walking around. I remember Michael Bivens was there. I just went off into a tangent, but yeah. Uh, shout out to New Edition. Ghetto Boys, Norman Osborne is a group. MMA Crossfire, if you're in the group, your name should be on the chat. <laughs> That's what I, oh, don't let me start with the music business. Don't do it, MMA. Don't make me get upset because there's a lot of people in a lot of groups whose names were not on no checks. Matter of fact, most of the people's names that you see and we know as part of groups, names weren't on any checks. Um, 
The check is a whole. If if if, if your name being on the check is the criteria for a group. Boy, we would change the whole definition. That's a tough one, MMA. Don't, don't get me hyped in here. Verse Pro, he says, all of New Edition sang. Yeah. Wax curator, Johnny Gill. Um, Rock Kappa, 112 without Slim is really is Millie Vanilli. Man. I want to do an epic fail on Millie Vanilli. I think I kind of told the story here. I don't know if I told it on this live, but I want to do an epic fail on that because I have a whole story behind Millie Vanilli that I saw. Henry Munoz, PE, Wu, BDP, Run DMC, EPMD, De La Soul, and Tribe Quest, fifth place tie. I love, I love that list. And like I said, I would take Run DMC out of any list. Run DMC to me is above a list. Um, so I would just run the, I wouldn't rank, I don't, I wouldn't even rank Run DMC in anything. But outside of them, that's I love that list. BDP to me, I wouldn't have BDP as a as a top group. I think KRS One was too much of the dominant force. I think if D Nice was like rhyming sometimes on the records or somebody else, then I would say BDP was more of a group. BDP was, in my opinion, as a member of BDP, I think BDP was KRS One and whoever he wanted to be down with him at the time. In my opinion. Because as you can see, members came in and out, in and out, in and out. If you were signed to Jive, you couldn't just be in and out of BDP. You'd be part of the, you know, the, the, the decisions. You'd be signed to Jive. The only person in Boogie Down Productions that was signed to Jive was KRS-One. D-Nice and Miss Melody were signed to Jive for separate solo deals. Boogie Down Productions had one member as far as Jive was concerned. But BDP was a group. There's a lot of people in, in and out, including myself. But I would take BDP out of that. That's just my opinion as being in it. Some of y'all may disagree. Gregory Nettas, Pam Greer is a duo or a group. <laughs> we, Pam Greer is ranked very high on this channel. Pam Greer is a duo and a group. And a soloist, and a gang. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Wax Curator, thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. Speaking of collections, I believe DITC is arguably the greatest collective of MCs and producers. Your thoughts? The greatest. I'm still leaning towards native tongue for producers and MCs, but that's a big one because Diamond D and Showbiz and Lord Finesse. I'd have to think about that one because I, I might I might like that. And you say arguably, which means you can argue that. I you can argue that. DITC, because I'm trying to think who would even be who would have a collective with dope producers and MCs, multiple, you need multiple producers. Um, and as I said, that's why I like native tongue because you put Prince Paul and his work with Dela. And you put Q-Tip, who's an animal, you look at his discography, and then you put even Africa from the Jungle Brothers. Um, that's some dope production in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. But in the 90s, I would definitely go DITC. In the 90s, I could definitely see 
Yeah. Wax Curator, I'm going to go with that. Arguably the greatest collective of MCs and producers, DITC. Yes. You can argue that for sure. I'm going to go a little bit longer, y'all. We had an hour and 25. I'm going to go a little longer. I love this conversation. Um, I'm going to go a little longer. Um, let's see. Here we go. Robbie the Danger. Okay, so three members that have vocals on the record. Two members that have vocals on the record. Two or more. R.E. Buffy 361, Fushnikins. Shout out to the Fushnikins. We, we were on tour with them in Europe for a while. Flavor Unit, never to gets mentioned as much as they should. Abe Ocho Ochoa, Ochoa. Flavor Unit, I love the Flavor Unit. Um, 45 King is one of the greatest producers of all time. Shout out to him. Shout out to the whole crew, Latifa, Naughty, Chill Rob G, Lati. Double X, who am I forgetting? La Kim Shabazz. Shout out to the flavor unit. I am Brad, I am Brattle. P E a crew, not singular. <laughs> yeah, Chuck said it. P E a group, a crew, not singular. We wear rap, we wear black wranglers. Dola, my Edo G and the Bulldogs. Did anybody else in the Bulldogs rap? You know, that would be a good question to see whose names were on the check, MMA. If you're a group, let's see whose name is on the check when the royalties come. Whoever's on the check, <laughs> that's in the group. That would be crazy. A lot of people would be upset because a lot of people that you think of in groups are not on those checks. Joker's oddball. Yeah, De La are dope. I just think they could have tweaked some shit, but that's my ear. Of course, um, nobody's perfect. You know, I just, I just, that's my crew. Everybody has their own, you know. Benetton, Don Madeline, Native Tongues are one of the greatest crews ever. Yes. Last call. Humpty and Shock G are the same dude. That a duo or group. Yeah, we mentioned this. I'm saying that Digital Underground is a group. Also, shout out to Money B. Money B rhymed on a bunch of shit. Shout out to Money B. Shout out to my man DJ Fuse, of course. But just if you go on Humpty and Shark G, that's two, even though it's the same person, that's really two MCs. They were so different. And Digital Underground presented them as two different MCs. So, yes, Digital Underground is a group. JT, thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. Really appreciate it. KP, just want to say thanks. This week's live was a hood barbershop debate special. Yes, it was. That's what we're here for. We do this every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're not doing nothing, just come hang out with us. We have no real set format. I just love coming on here and talking about hip hop with you guys. You guys are very knowledgeable. And we just get into debates like this and we just go. Um, and I love it. I'm going to answer like two more and I'm going to get out of here. We're at an hour and a half. MMA Crossfire, the Deaf Jeff is here. Def Jeff, the MC, is, is on is, is live. That would be dope. Shout out to Def Jeff. Wild Pitch, not Wild Pitch, uh, Delicious Vinyl Records. I think I met Def Jeff in, in um, LA. That'd be dope if Jeff Jeff was here. Norman Osborne, the best group of all is PE. Muck Muck the General, FE2, dope list. I forgot that about the Liquid Crew. Shout out to the Liquid Crew. King T, Alcoholics. Who else was in the Liquid Crew? Because it's the Lakes. Who, who am I forgetting? A 
All right. Uh, Hassan Burton. They saying Def Jeff. I hope is Def Jeff on here. That'd be dope. Shout out to Def Jeff, whether he's on here or not. Uh, legend in 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 the, in the in the West Coast. El Tico Local, Lords of the Underground. Shout out to the Lords of the Underground. Shout out to Mr. Funky. Shout out to Do It All. Um, the Colonel James. What up, man? Um, Brother KP, on the eve of my birthday, let me say what an honor and gift it is for, for me to celebrate with you and everyone here. True hip hop and BDP fan. Love you, big bro. Love and light all here. Yes. Happy birthday to you, the Colonel James from the Kenny Parker Show. Yes, happy birthday. You made it around another year. VHS Hip Hop, Def Jeff, we got to hear boss stories. What am I missing? I'm not, am I not seeing Def Jeff is on here? And we about to check off, man. Oh. I see people just shouting out groups, the Bush Babies. Shout out to the Bush Babies. We run things, things no run. We. All right, I'm gonna get off. I'm just trying to catch some last little things here. Uh, unknown, user unknown, damn, missed the live. <laughs> Hi everyone, yeah, you missed it, but you could always check the rewind. All right, y'all, we're gonna get off with an hour and a half. Thank you guys so much once again. Shout out to all the people who are gonna check this out later on the rewind. And once again, I say, you guys that come on here, you guys are the backbone of the channel. I haven't posted in a minute. I have a few um, epic fails that I'm going to put up shortly. Uh, but I just make sure I'm here every Tuesday, 8 o'clock, because we love this, man. All right, I'm going to get out of here. He walks Emporium, peace, MMA, peace, Rod Justice, hip hop, peace, um, the Colonel James, peace, Muck Muck, peace. Stella Shriner, it was fun. Yes, Green Line Entertainment, peace. Um, Spook Ram 4Q, peace, everybody. Um, Blaze, this chat is super dope, y'all. Peace, peace, everybody. Um, I'll catch you guys next week. Happy birthday, Colonel James. Um, I'm just seeing the things come up. Reed Buffy 361, thank you. All right, y'all, I'm out of here till next week. I'll catch you guys later. Peace, peace, peace.